So um, I, I think this is called encephalization, and it happened. Be it, it, it happened because we uh, learned how to cook meat, and this um, this gave us more energy to go to our brain because um, formerly uh, we had to use the energy to digest meat. Yeah, well, that's a theory, but I don't. I don't. I think our brain was developed before we invented the fire. Okay, inventing the fire and controlling fire, it already required a vocabulary. It already requ required people to cooperate with each other and understand what each other was saying. So, you know, we can theorize on what led to what, but I don't buy the theory that our brain was a product of eating cooked protein, all right? Um, this, the real surpluses we created is when we farmed grains and when we started manipulating those grains to create higher yields and we created huge surpluses, that's when we had time to use a brain. That's when we had time to contemplate and really get the most out of a brain. God has to be within the conceptual realm, um, unless you're a pantheist. And when I say that, I mean that God is really an extension of, of human concepts of goodness, infinity, and love. Oh, come on. We know what love is, all right? It's a, it's a, it's a, a desire, an attachment, a, a perception of need and um, um, uh, whatever the right word is, uh, dependency, interdependency that is built into us structurally by the DNA molecule because we lived in social organizations and it created, it made us, it made us more survivable. It's the same mechanism that keeps the seals into a, a herd of seals or the wildebeest into a herd of wildebeest. These relationships, these attachments, these dependencies are what is created. So love as a word doesn't mean a hell of a lot. Um, it's, it's, this is, this, it's, it's mushed talk. There's nothing innately, we, we are in no way dependent on some perception of infinity. That's not going to get us anywhere. You can contemplate infinity forever. What good is it going to do you? So it has nothing to do with your consciousness and its need for satisfaction and, and to, to, to be completed. All right? It does not complete us all right, to contemplate infinity. God sort of fills in that mysterious nature of reality that we don't have access to and that we sustain. No, it just fills in our need to erase the parts of reality we don't want to deal with. We can just erase them. We just erase them with the God eraser. So we just replace every variable we don't like in the equation. We'll just stick God in there. Okay, because now we have these wild cards. It's like playing a game of cards. And so you have this wild, oh God, okay, I can just throw the God card. And so I can, I can clean up any mess I don't want to have to deal with. I can cover it up. I can put a blanket over it. Okay, the spilt milk's on the floor. I'll just put the God blanket over it. Now I don't have to deal with it. That's all it is. It's a, it's a, it's a contrivance of human convenience to escape uh, the responsibility to deal with reality. It's escapism. The people don't like to worship the physical world. Um, people don't like to revere the physical world if the cause is. Oh man, you know, what people like is really not the subject. Either you're going to be a serious philosopher or you're not. I mean, if it's going to be what people like, if we're going to tailor the truth to people's desires and preferences and prejudices, then fuck the conversation. What's the point of having a conversation? Because then we might as well just talk about purple unicorns and leprechauns. Just fuck being rational. Uh, let's just talk about what we like the truth to be. Um, I think that a lot of people think that spirituality can't be caused or that that God and all that God entails um, is not special unless we don't understand it. And I think this is silly myself. Uh, well, whatever. I mean, whether it's a silly, incomprehensible God or a contrived God made out of some notion that the planet is the heart of the universe or some other bullshit metaphor of somehow pantheetic, you know, symbiotic uh, creativity. I mean, fuck! Discrete interactions in the brain um, from these smaller parts um, arises a, a more cohesive model of um, viewing the world. 
more cohesive than what? I mean, what? It's all different models. Everybody comes up with their own model. The point is the brain is intended, it's created to be a rational functioning machine. I mean, it's reasoning. The capacity to reason is what we were given. Uh, besides the whole language thing and everything else that expanded our knowledge base. That's the separate issue. But the very faculty of it, is, the point of it, is not to be delusionary. The faculty is intended to be reasonable, to allow us to manipulate reality to serve our needs. That's the origin of this faculty. All right, and so what you're saying is, is that we let's just let's just screw the faculty, let's screw the logic, screw the rationality, by creating a bunch of illusions. Okay, let's just f f fuck reality. Let's let's create our our purple spangly unicorns and chase them. That's it, it, it's nonsense. The actual program that's running um, from the parts of the brain is not quantifiable. Um, it's it's uh, something that can't be measured and um, something that must be experienced. Oh, well, look, can't be measured is just because we don't have the tools to measure it. Experienced, well, yeah, that, yeah, consciousness has meaning when you experience it. You have to actually be alive to use your cognitive abilities, but it has nothing to do with the fact that the, the input, the structure, you, the framework you spoke of, the framework has to be accurate. If you build the model of the universe in your brain and it is full of parts that don't exist and things that don't exist in the real world, then it's a useless model. You will not interact with it. You will not gain useful, productive behavior out of it because you will be, um, uh, in, in, you will be interacting with bullshit. And I think this is a really interesting and um, pretty sound uh, way of looking at consciousness. And um, I think that God can be um, compared to this. Uh, God is something that arises from the human experience. Oh, here we go. Arises, arises. And I use this word twice. Well, I, everything arises now. You know, nothing's cause and effect. Everything's arisal. You know, it's arisal and arisal. Arisal, arisal, arisal. I mean, what, what, what does that mean, arises? I mean, come on. Damn it. God is like um, a piece of music or a work of art in that um, a piece of art is made from a bunch of smaller brush strokes, but the whole of it um, means something different than just the collective brush strokes. And in this well, whatever. That's not that's that's a model. It's a metaphor for reality, but it is not reality. Okay, when we look at the universe, it's not brush strokes, it's not irrelevant brush strokes that create some magnificent thing. No, one brush stroke is a rock, one brush stroke is a human being. They're completely different brush strokes. One of them is, in, one is incredibly meaningful, the other one is incredibly irrelevant. <laughs> so it's the, in the brush strokes is where the magic is here. And this presumption that it's a painting, it's not a painting. It's not what it is. That there's no, there's no fucking eye out there looking at the universe saying, okay, it's all brush strokes. No, that's not happening. That's not the fucking reality. The reality is in the strokes. The strokes are where the meaning is. And it's not all the strokes, it's just the goddamn strokes that have this thing called sentience and the ability to feel. And that's where everything, the origin of all value exists in that fucking happening. That arisal. It means something to us. It means something to us because we're human. Music is a human thing. No, it isn't. It's just another thing that satisfies, it stimulates um, the, 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 the desire and drive and, and comfort um, disposition of the organism. Every organism has something that comforts it, that satisfies it, that satiates it. Um, that's, that's just a fact of its existence. Any consciousness is going to have that syndrome where they're going to find something uh, uh, you know, something that relieves their pain, that, that, that satisfies their need. And that's all music does. It comforts our 
our psychology because our psychology is a specific psychology so what makes a a slug happy is going to be different than what makes a human being happy but it's just psychology it isn't magic it isn't god it isn't anything it's just a psychological disposition an addiction it is we can create heroin to satisfy our addiction period god certainly um, can belong in the realm of the conceptual um, as a sort of uh, the question is can it can it belong in the realm of serious rational philosophy not phantasmagorical bullshit but in the realm of logical rational philosophy does God mean anything is that a meaningful relevant fucking word or is it just a contrivance of ignorance